stop it, will us? Sometimes, kids. Would be a good idea, wouldn't it? I'm a bit hungry. Yeah. I'll tell you what, as well, we could get Starving. some cigarettes. Because I ain't got any. Can I have one of yours, mate? Yeah, I'll give you one of mine. Do you want one? What's that? Are we swapping round, love? No, we're not. Yes, we are. No, we're not. Got about not. 50 miles. Come on, swap round. Swap round with Lally. Come on, Lally. You will stay in the back for a bit. You're always sitting in the front. I live in the back. You can't sit down by the fire and read a book when you're away because all that is there is the van, and the van is your home. You you go from one town to the next town, and you sing, and you move on, and you sing, and you move on. When first snow went to Wagonin, oh, Wagonin did roll. It filled me poor old parents' hearts with sorrow, grief and woe. And many other hardships that since have undergone. Sing, woe, lad, sing, woe. And topsy turvy lads, and things is run be steam. And the whole world passes before me, just like a morning dream. Sing, oh, lads, sing, oh, drive on, lads, drive on. Who oh, wouldn't be for all the world if you only wagoned? Oh, well, Martin, this is coming, lads. What? Players we shall see Like calf before the wind My lads will make a money plea And every lad shall take his last And he'll have it on his knee Sing! Oh, my lads, sing! Oh, drive on, my lads, drive on Who oh, wouldn't be for all the world And you'll be They sing in folk clubs all over the country. They travel around in an old van. They positively shun the limelight. These are the Watersons, a very important part of the revival of traditional British music. They live in Hull. The first thing I do when I get back to Hull is to drop the others off at their house and then go home myself. Uh, they live down Louis Street in a, in a large house. I don't live there myself, but uh, in another part of the town, you're sharing a house with my mother. The lower half of the house is occupied by the two girls. Elaine has the front part, the front bedroom, which is easily recognisable by the, the drawn curtains, while Norma is in uh, the next room. Mike and his wife share the upper part of the house. Mike has always had a, a passion for collecting things and making things, and the flat is always untidy, and what with a, a baby around, I think it gets on Anna's nerves quite a lot. Mike, Norma and Elaine Waterson are orphans. A generation back, the family was either gypsy, tinker or farmer. Yorkshire blood mixing with Irish blood. In Mike, the ancestry is most remarkable. Mike can be very practical with his hands when he's interested. But he's also a daydreamer, a romantic who likes dreams for their own sake. He's 24. His younger sister, Elaine, is 22. The curtain across the window is permanent, partly to keep out peeping eyes, partly as a revolt against white net, mostly because it suits her character. The paintings one sees around the house are her own. Her bookshelves are filled with poetry. Norma is 26 and mother to the family. She's been married, but is now separated. It's she who organizes the group's singing engagements. She has a passion for antiques. She's quite the most self-reliant member of the group. John Harrison is the outsider and has a totally different background. He lives in another part of the town and he's put aside his grammar school background and white collar job to join the Watersons. John's family are all in the fishing industry 
the yarns, the songs, the noises, the smells and hardships of working life on the ships and fish docks of Hull fascinate all the group and they bring it alive in their singing. A diamond is a ship, my lads, for the Davis Straits is bound. And the kit is all garnished with the bonny lasses round. Captain Thompson gives the orders to sail the whole world wide. Well, the sun, it never sets, my lads, and the darkness dims the sky. And let's cheer up, my lads, let your hearts never fail. For the bonny ship, the diamond, goes fishing for the wind. Along the key at Peterhead, where the lasses stand around, with the shoals all pulled about, and on the salt is running down. Now don't you weep, my bonny lass, or we leave you behind, for the rose will grow on Greenland's banks before we change your mind. And let's cheer up, my lads, let your hearts never fail, for a bonny ship that I'm and goes fishing for the wind. Here's a help to the resolution, likewise the Eliza Swan. Here's an help to the Battle of the Monte Rose and the Diamond Ship of Fame. We wear the trousers of the white and the jackets of the blue. When we come home to Peter Ed, we'll have sweethearts and you. And let's cheer up, my lads, let your hearts never fail. For a body ship the diamond goes fishing for the wind. It'll be bright both day and night when the Greenland lads come home. With a ship that's full of oil, my lads, and money of our own. We'll make the cradles for to rock and the blankets for to tear And every lass in Peterhead sings hush a by my dear And it's cheer up me lads, let your hearts never fail For the bonny ship that I'm and goes fishing for the wind Oh, what's on the fish dock? For a short period of time during the summer holidays I used to work as um, what we call a barrow lad it involved bringing boxes of fish from one end of the dock to the other, um, helping the men throw the fish into the tubs for filleting. You, you stood there all day with your hands in a tub full of freezing cold water, with the, the, the dangers of the fish bones going into your hands, and this happened quite a lot. I've seen men with hands as, as big as oranges because the, the bones had penetrated up the fingernails and turned septic. I see an host of craft spread in the sails lay. As down the home they do glide, all bound for the northern sea. Methinks I see on each small craft a crew with hearts of brave. Going out to earn the daily bread upon the restless wave. And this three score and ten, boys and men, were lost from Grimsby town. From Yarmouth down to Scarborough, many hundreds more. This music doesn't exist today as a living form, but only in odd corners of memory, and collected, hidden in the early recordings, notes and jottings treasured in the collections of Cecil Sharp House. From these still warm ashes, the Watersons create a music, which is then seen to be very much alive. From all ye jolly sporting men who love to go aloft, and I'll tell you of a mowing match come off at Brimby Cross. They were curly up but free or mere on one for the wind. From what those two lads did that day, they Roy Guest, 
who has an agency for professional folk singers, which handles the Waterson's bookings, is suspicious about the present popularity of pop folk. I don't think there are any true folk singers in the eye of the big public. If by the big names you mean Bob Dylan, Peter, Paul and Mary, I think these people are more part of the world of popular music or pop music. Basically, these people sing songs they've written themselves. A true folk singer, the name given to them, shall we say, is traditional singer, people like Bob Roberts or Fred Jordan, Harry Cox, who is now old and ill. These are the true folk singers. They're the people from whom the songs came down, from whom they were transmitted. The name given to the singers who listen to these singers and sing their songs is usually revival singers. Uh, one of the reasons for the strength of the Watersons is that their roots are in the working class. Uh, the first week is London area. Yeah. Mm. Starting off with the true. Then on this day, you've got a rehearsal for the Albert Hall, actually. That goes on there. Uh -huh. um, is that the one that starts at 10 o'clock in the morning? Uh, I don't know. They've written to you about it. Have yes, they not? Yeah. The Watersons sing mostly at folk clubs, of which there are three or four hundred up and down the country. Well, I don't think you can be there at 10, because you're at the Troubadour till 2 a.m., and that's a bit ridiculous. Let's say 2.30 rehearsal, mm -hmm. and I will confirm that in writing with them. Yeah. Yeah. Monday's off, then we go Potter's Bar, Surbiton, Chesham. That is a concert with Tom Paxton. Yeah. Right, that's your first week. Then you get a week off. Then you begin here, a concert in Cambridge for the City Council. Yeah. And then you get quite a nice little sort of Northern Midlands tour. Halifax, York, Grimsby, Wolverhampton and two gigs in Sheffield. That means we can go home each night, doesn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. good, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, the Watersons began about two years ago, I think, and they began by singing around the clubs, and I would say now that they're one of the most popular club groups, if not the most popular. Uh, how do they fit into it? I think very well indeed. They're a wonderful example of a group that has studied real traditional music and in the way they interpret it it is entertaining to use a word to a great number of people but their roots are very firmly Hull and Yorkshire that also I think is part of their strength because of their very close-knit family background and because they live together and are together 90 percent of the time what comes forth is not four different people singing one song, it's a unity. We have great bus stops, you know. It's generally three on to one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Us three on to John. <laughs> no, the poor old John yeah. takes... No. It's not, no. It's John, John takes the blunt of a lot of arguments, but only because... Uh, he's the I'm youngest. It's, it's, <laughs> no, he's the youngest. It's only because he's the youngest. John, John has had the biggest difficulty of the lot of us that are fitting in, in as much as uh, he wasn't brought up like us. And uh, although he's a great admirer of what we did, he was an outsider. John is an only son. Anything he wants, really, you're very spoiled, aren't you? Yeah. Anything he wants, he can get. If I can't, if I can't get him moody. Yeah. Very moody. John lives nearly a completely different home life from the one that we live. Uh, he lives with his mum, and uh, he's brought up a lot differently as well. We're very irresponsible. John isn't. John likes to know what he's doing next week and next month. We don't. We live from day to day. He's much more one of us now than he was two years ago, which is only natural as he, as he lives with us for weeks on end when we're on tours. But it's quite understandable that his mother, as there's just the two of them, would like to have him at home all the time because it must get lonely for her when, she, when he's away. That was a wonderful woman. She's a great woman, you know. <laughs> she didn't want us to turn professional because he's got a nice safe job, you know. But uh, it's what he wants to do. But I've got the feeling she sort of, sort of uh, thinks that, that we brainwashed him into it. That he was as egotistical as the rest of us, you know. <laughs> Thank you. 
slightly spoilt by his mum because he's the only one. I think you do tend to get spoilt. You, you have everything that you want. by us as a, as a great singer, he's also a great friend of ours. And if he's going down to London or up to Newcastle and he's got a day off, he'll drop by. He's also a very frequent guest artist at the club. We're always being requested for him back again by members of the club. He's very well liked. Well, you know, if, if a performer can uh, get within himself, you know, we, we do it as a, as a, a group. Yes, I've noticed. We, we can sing, sing to ourselves. Too. And there's so much enjoyment there, among ourselves, you know, that the audience catches on to this. And a yeah. solo singer can do this. Yeah, I agree, though. You, you know, can, yeah. you can lose yourself <coughs> within yourself and yeah. forget completely about the audience. And they, but they can lose themselves in with you as well. Yeah, well, well this and is well, the that's sometimes happens. happens. That's the point, yeah. to bring the audience into you instead of, instead of projecting your particular personality out yeah. to the audience. Mm. We're all sort of singers. We're conditioned to singing in clubs. We're conditioned to be club performers mm. now, which never was the role of folk singers before. Well, the thing is, we, what we've done, we've picked up the threads of a tradition. And we've not got, really, other than a few old recordings, we've not got anything else to go on. Uh, one, of, one of the big things with this, Anne, is, is, is the fact that these people, these traditional singers, were the greatest performers of all time. Yeah, I'm well aware of they this. Were, I'm not, I was you know, saying. Uh, we are, in fact, playing at a game that, that was theirs completely naturally. Charlie Bates. Gets up on a stage. My sweetheart, come along. Yeah. Don't you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is yeah, fabulous. Accordion going on. Yeah. One hand, you away with the other. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that is pure entertainment. You know. The old ways are changing. You cannot deny the day of the travellers over. There's no way the Watersons and their friends play at the game in Hull every Sunday night in their club over an old pub. The average attendance is over a hundred and there's no room for all who wish to join. The Watersons have created an exceptionally dedicated and critical audience. Farewell to the cant and the travelling tongue Farewell to the Romany talking, the buying and selling, the old fortune telling, the knock on the door and the hawking. Farewell to the tent and the old caravan, to the tinker, the gypsy, the travelling man. Farewell to the thirty foot trailer. Um, this is the last song before we invite Louis back again, and it's the Helston Mayday song, Hall and Toe. Since man was first created, these works have been debated. We have celebrated the coming of the spring. Hall and Toe, jolly lumbalo, we were up. Long before the day of to welcome in the summer, to welcome in the mail. For summer is a coming in and winter's gone. 
gone away, oh. Take the scorn to where the horn, it was the crest when you was born. Your father's father wore it, and your father wore it too. Helen so jolly on the law, we were up long before the day, oh, to welcome in the summer. God bless and merry and all help and my and send us peace to England. Send peace by We didn't go to any clubs before we formed our own clubs. We knew nothing whatsoever about other people's clubs. We opened in a dance hall to 40 personal friends, mm -hmm. with tea served at 9 o'clock in the interval, you know. Biscuits. Our audience biscuits. was people who pushed us. Mm. Our personal friends, that's what yeah. she yeah. And we'd there about six weeks and uh, realised that a gaggle was essential, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> moved to a pub. Taste the holy waters. <laughs> That young woman too. It's very important. <laughs> Thank you, Ash. Here's a, here's a song entitled "The Coal Owner and the Pitman's Wife." You know the chorus. It's the same one as uh, the Liverpool packet of the. Louis Killen, who gave the Watersons a great deal of encouragement when they were starting, is now one of the most frequent visitors to the club. A dialogue I'll tell you is true as me life. Between a coal owner and a poor pitman's wife As she was a walking nail on the highway She met the coal owner and the she did say Derry down, 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 derry down Good morning, Lord, fire damp this woman, she cried I'll do you no harm We really weren't brought up on traditional folk music But music hall songs and, and that type of thing my grandmother used to sing them, and my mother and auntie. When the centre of Hull was bombed, most of the centre had to be redeveloped, and so a lot of the buildings came down. One of them was the Tivolid Music Hall, a very thriving place. So the music hall songs went into the pubs. They hire pianists who sit and play the whole night, and everybody gets round and sings. It's really tremendous. This is our tradition, really. This is what we were brought up on. <laughs> Musical songs, hymns, pop, jazz, all are part of the immediate musical background of the Watersons. But they have rejected all this for themselves in favour of much older sources of music handed down by oral tradition or found only in dusty manuscripts. Some of their music dates back only to the early part of this century. Some is far older, going back to the 12th and 13th centuries. With a head so 
away and slash away so manfully it seems. Then caught and lost and then he goes. The emergence of the Watersons has coincided with a nationwide revival of interest in traditional folk music, with the result that they find themselves in great demand. They have, in fact, catapulted into the top ranks of their profession in less than two years. Bill Leader, their recording manager, was so impressed when he first heard them performing that he's put them under contract on the spot. <coughs> there is a growing demand for their records. Up till now, the, the more serious performers have been solo performers. And for the first time, I think, a group that doesn't rely on instrumental brilliance has begun to try to recreate English traditional music. They seem to have captured a sort of harmonizing that could be called traditional, but at the same time, all the popular music they've ever heard, Ella Fitzgerald, The Rolling Stones, you can feel this edging in to everything they do. On their weeks off, the Watersons rehearse at home, and even in rehearsal, their response to the music is largely instinctive. There's no preset idea of how the song should sound. Instead of keeping on the same note, take it down. Which note? Rover. Counter. Oh, I. There was Countess Rover. Yeah. Do you want to try it like that, Michael? Instead of instead of Countess Rover, do you want to take it down? Well, it's not me, is it? I'll just have one person doing it because it sounds horrible. No, I mean you're just mucking about with the tune. You're not you're not doing anything constructive with it. Which is the note you got wrong? On the run down, which has nothing to do with the tune whatsoever. Well, let's have a bash at it, anyway. What we are doing is not really traditional anyway, because a group as such, unless they were musicians, is not a traditional thing. So we try to mess about with the song as little as possible. singers of traditional music, the Maritime Museum at Hull is a mecca. Whaling was a big industry on the northeast coast until the 1830s. Today, the songs may be scarcely more than an echo from the past, but the relics and pictures in the museum help conjure up a strong feeling for the life the whalers had. <laughs> Get it up a bit. It was in 1864 on March the 13th day. Our gallant sailor and her way Mount the Greenland boat sets sail 
<laughs> your words are a bit different than yeah. mine. Quite a different version. Go on, sing it. It's got, it's, you're right about the harmonies. Uh, look out on the, the cross trees high with a spyglass in his hand. There's a whale, there's a whale, there's a whale, fishy cries. And she blows at every span. You're doing mine too. Now. Poor captain stood on the quarter deck, and the sword of a man was he. Your daddy tackles fall, and we'll launch them boats to sea. We've struck that whale, and the line played out, but she gave a flurry with her tail, and the boat capsized. We lost seven of our men. And we never caught that way. Now the losing of seven fine seamen, it grieved the captain sore. But the losing of a bloody sperm way. Grieved him ten times more. Headline Arrival of the Swan from Davis Straits, 25 lives lost. The Bark D of Aberdeen arrived here this evening from the Davis Strait with seven fish, about 60 tons. 37 of the D's crew were lost. The remaining 12 of the crew are very ill. Wages at five pounds per month for seven months, eight days, 36 pounds, six and eight pence. Total deductions, 24 pounds, five and six pence. Balance due, 14 pounds, 8 and tuppence for 7 months and 8 days. We've got a bloke called Danny with the adventure down in the creek. He says they can remember the time when the whole of the Humber from the ferry, as far as you could see both sides, was a forest of masts. I want a boat because I love boats. And build me boat in the back garden. Take the fence down when it's finished. Out into the street onto a trolley and away. The Watersons, as far as anyone notices them at all in their hometown, apparently work when it pleases them, treat money lightly, have no desire for worldly signs of affluence, and are happy. To practical Yorkshire folk, this is unreasonable. When we first came down here, I think they were a little bit wary of us. We were different, we lead different lives to them. We're aware of that. And um, when we do come back, we we fill the house with with people and noise and singing. And this is different. But uh, now, I mean, they've got used to it and they're very nice to us. The, the kids, you know, the next door neighbours' kids come round and the other kids look after and play with our kids, so at least they think, well, in that respect, we're human. It's Norma who keeps track of the group finances and keeps records of their engagements. It's difficult to say exactly how much the Watersons earn. They certainly earn enough to live on, but they could be earning a lot more if they'd wished to ride the folk bandwagon. In fact, they artificially restrict their income by working a week on and a week off in order to be able to enjoy their children, read, collect songs, rehearse. 
or work on special projects, such as the revival of an old Yorkshire mumming play, which they're going to perform around Hull to collect money for charity. <laughs> brasses and silver. She was a second-hand dealer. She had lots of brasses and silver that she'd collected over the years. And once a week, we used to sit round the fire and clean the brasses, you know. And she never put her money in the bank. She used to keep it in the house and we counted her money. <laughs> and as we did it, we sang, you know. Grandmother was, she used to sing us to sleep. We were also brought up by a friend of my grandmother's and she used to sing to us. And my grandmother used to sing to us. It was just a a normal part of our bringing up. Nobody told us where I was, gypsy descendants or Irish tinker descendants, you see. And uh, Norma went out to visit one of our very old aunties, my grandmother's sister, you know. She has a bungalow in the country, which is near the sea, you know, over on the coast. They're very ashamed of the fact that they've got gypsies in the family, you know, or tinkers in the family. Yeah, but you said your great-grandmother wasn't a gypsy, she was a lady. <laughs> yet, and, uh, yet my auntie will tell you that she's as good as a witch. She she's, will say oh, she's she a, can read fortune and things. Norma went to have a fortune told at a whole fair. The gypsy sat down and said, so it's queer you should come to me, because at times of the year you can do the same for me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Which was very surprising, because she knew nothing about her whatsoever. She was very, very good, this gypsy. And she just looked at me and she said, you're a traveller, you spend most of your life travelling. Should you do that for a living? And she said, and there's a girl who is very close to you, who also spends most of her life travelling with you. It's tremendous, you know, she's really very good. Of an old country farmer living in the west country, and he had the prettiest little wife that you ever did see. Well, a young fella came a courting her when the old man he wasn't nigh, and it's soft times to take a tumble amongst the valley and the rye. When the old man woke in the morning and he found himself alone, he looked out on the window and saw his wife in the corn. And the young fella lay beside her, it caused the man to cry. He cried, wife, wife, I wonder at you for a spoiling of our eye. She cried, husband, she cried, oh, husband, it's the like I've never done before. And if you've got one friend, love, I've another in store. He's a friend, love, will not deceive me if you will him employ. He's got money enough for love to pay for both the valley and the rye. It's peculiar when you're on tour. You seem to be living in suspended time. It's, it's very weird. You're at home and you live your ordinary life and then all of a sudden you're doing nothing but travelling. And the brightest parts are when you're actually singing or when you're talking about singing. Meeting people is very nice as well who are interested in finding songs, etc. We're never really sure about where we're going to stay when we go out on tour. If we're doing a big concert, we get put up by the organiser of the concert in a hotel or a boarding house. But if it's a club, we stay with the club organisers or friends, but it's not always possible. So we carry a mattress and blankets and sleeping bags and stuff in the van just to sort of lighten their burden. An off country made up to London has strayed. Although with their nature 
It did not agree And she's wept and she sighed And she's wrung her hands and cried How I wish once again In the north I could be Where the oak and the ash And the bunny ivy tree All flourish and bloom In my north country How sadly I roam and lament my dear home where lads and lasses are making the hay where the bells they do ring and the little birds they sing and the maidens and meadows are pleasant and gay where the and the bunny ivy tree all flourish and bloom in my north country well i bet if i pleased i could marry with ease for where bunny lasses are lovers will come but the lad that I wed must be North Country bred and must carry me back to my North Country home. Where the oak and the ash and the bunny ivy tree all flourish and bloom in my north country You've got to move fast to keep up with the times For these days a man cannot wander As a bailer to say you must be on your way And another to say you can't wander Farewell to the tent and the old caravan To the tinker, the gypsy, the travelling man <laughs>